Hello and welcome to the quarterfinals of Grand Prix Boston Worcester. I'm Ben Swartz, joined here in the booth by Ray Punzlon. Hello everybody, how are you doing tonight? And what a match, what a quarterfinals we've got for you. You've got Shota Yasuoka from Japan on the left-hand side of your screen. And he's facing off against Cedric Phillips on the right-hand side of your screen. Cedric Phillips sending a tweet to all of his followers before they can start. And it looks like Cedric will start things off. Cedric has the ability to play first thanks to the new play draw rule. He finished the Swiss in second place. So he'll get to choose to play first against almost everybody in this top eight. Yeah, leads off with uh, Island, Sp Island Plains and off of Dragon's Call Summit, Shota's able to play his... Crimson Muck Waiter. Yep. We have all the, the top yep. eight deck lists here. Shota on an aggressive black-red deck and uh, Cedric on a blue-white skies deck. Looks like Shota's going to spend no time and Get in there, attack for three with the Crimson Muck Waiter, dropping Cedric down to 17 life. Cedric only with a Knight of Glory to face off against Shota's Muck Waiter and newly minted Vampire Nighthawk. For turn two, turn three play, that's probably as good as Shota's deck gets. For sure. So Cedric's going to get in with the Knight of Glory, dropping Shota to 17, and clone the Vampire Nighthawk. Let's see how Shota deals with yeah, as far as place. removal, Shota's going to have two Crippling Blights, two Essence Drains. Uh, he has a Murder in his deck as well, uh, and a Searing Spear. So, uh, so he does have a couple ways to deal with a Vampire, uh, to deal with a clone as a Vampire Nighthawk. Shota's going to attack in here with both of his creatures, dealing five to Cedric, dropping him down to 12 life points. Post combat, Shota's going to add a Liliana Shade to the table, go fetch out a Swamp. Yeah, Liliana Shade's going to get the fifth land um, for Shota. He'll be able to play the Essence Drain next turn. Cedric really needs something to, to get rid of uh, Shota's attackers. This is not how Cedric drew up this game. Cedric attacks him with the Vampire Nighthawk. 3-4, thanks to Exalted from the Knight of Glory. That'll net him 3 life, bring him back up to 15. But this trade-off that Cedric has right now is just not ideal. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's going to need a better defensive creature right now. Ooh. Or a pacifism. <laughs> yeah, pacifism on Vampire Nighthawk. We'll take that out of uh, the combat. I feel like we're going to see the essence drain here. We're going to aim it towards the clone Close. for Shota. Yep. It looks like that's what Shota's going to do. He's going to essence drain the clone, as you said, after getting in with the Crimson Muck Waiter. Cedric on 12, Shota on 16. Or 19. 19. After the life gain from the Essence Drain. So Knight of Glory keeping the Liliana Shade at bay, but the Crimson Mud wa uh, Waiter is going to be an <coughs> issue for Cedric. Although Shota is now tapped out, so if Cedric has a way to remove it, unlikely in blue-white, this might be his chance. I believe I see a captain to watch in Cedric's hand right now. Okay, that's definitely in his deck, along with two unsummons and two tolerant invocations. So pretty powerful blue-white skies deck from Cedric. Two pacifisms. And there is the captain of the watch. Bring a little fr couple friends with him. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that will give the Knight of Glory vigilance. So captain of the watch, does that give all your soldiers plus one, plus one, and vigilance? Okay, so, so not the Knight of Glory then. I thought it was humans and soldiers for some reason. They're probably gathering up some tokens for Cedric to use right now. Oh, and Servant of Nephorox comes down for Shota, which will turn that Crimson Muckwaiter into a four-power creature. With the ability to regenerate. Let's see if Cedric's in the chumping mood just yet. Doesn't have any really good plays other than either take it or chump. The regeneration of that is going to be real troublesome. So, yeah, Cedric's just going to chump away a soldier. Shota goes ahead and uh, regenerates it anyway. Cedric draws for his turn. So, he has a... I think it was a Battleflight Eagle that he just picked up for the turn. Yep, Battleflight Eagle. He'll give plus two, plus two in flying to the captain of the watch and attack in with Vigilance, that will drop Shota 14 yeah. or 13. down to 13. Plus one because yeah, of the exalted, exalted of the 
the night. Cedric goes on trumping duties again. So in a way that Captain Watch has brought Cedric two fog effects. Rummaging Goblin comes down for Shota. And then also a giant, giant scorpion. scorpion there. So Cedric will attempt to race with his Battleflight e uh, battle Eagle. But only doing three a turn. Yeah, Shota's the ground defense is pretty solid right now, though. Most of his guys can't get past Knight of Glory. Crimson Mud Waiter is going to be <laughs> eating away a soldier a turn, it looks like, for uh, Shota. So Cedric attacks in with the Battleflight Eagle. Dropping Shota down to 10. Now he has Cedric three cards in hand, so hopefully, does he have any more business there? What can he be holding up? Does he have um, His Divine Verdicts? Um, does not look like any Divine Verdicts. He has Unsummon and that's anything else possible? Uh, an Essence Scatter. Alright. And looks like it. Centric Trumps once again. Does not want to take any damage from the Crimson Muck Waiter. Right, Shota making room. It looks like he has another essence drain. Ooh, that would be killer. Can yeah. take out the captain of the watch if it so pleases, or the flyer. The flyer, Cedric is trying to win the game with a flyer, so I expect to kind of see it pointed right towards the battlefield eagle if he decides to play it. But ops not two, passes a turn, and uh, Cedric plays one of his fairy invaders. Looks like he's got two in his deck. And now he's got a pair of flyers to attack with, the Battleflight Eagle and the Fairy Invaders. Deal five points a turn, having uh, Shoto's life total. Is Shoto okay with taking five? Yeah, looks like it. Shoto yeah. will fall to five. Pass the turn back. What does Shoto have for those flyers? With Cedric at 12, don't think an Alpha Strike will do it. Looks like Lloyd is up one game. Alex Lloyd is up one game against Michael Kevin. Or Kevin Michael. So Muckwaiter will come in. Looks for like three, four damage total. Drop Cedric to eight. This time decides to take it. And Shota I mean, he's has out of soldier here. tokens to trump off. Shota just needs a way to deal with one of the flyers. Essence and Drain is one of those answers. That will take out the fairy invaders. Gain show to three life, bring him up to eight, and leave Cedric with just the Battleflight Eagle as his lone flyer. All right, so both players are at eight, but Shota's board is loaded right now. Monk Waiter's been doing some work, ate all three of the tokens, and then finally had an opportunity to chop away at Cedric's life. Both players on eight life here. Curious what Cedric's thinking about. He's keeping his hand pretty close to his chest. I can't get a good look at what options he has. And Cedric hasn't drawn any of his fog bands. Would have helped tremendously early on here. Talon's invocation would be great. Add a couple bodies onto the board. Cedric's he's taking his time, thinking through his lines of play. Drew one of his pacifisms earlier. So planes, he's going to play. Seven land there. I know that in the draft he passed up a Stormtide Leviathan for one of those pacifisms. R&D member Max McCall was able to cue me in on that. I saw the Stormtide Leviathan ended up in Brian DeMar's blue-red deck, which looked okay. really awesome. Looks like Cedric's just going to pass the turn back. That's got to be a big warning signal for Shota, right? He sits there and thinks for so long and then passes the turn back with seven mana up. It's Shota looks like he's going to go come in with more than the m Crimson muck, wa muck Waiter. Where is he going to stand after that is the question. 
Cedric, does, he doesn't have anything like a safe passage, does he? He does have safe passage. Oh, he does have a safe passage? I, I think. I guess no, not. No, no, he I doesn't. I missed right. He does have an unsummon. Two unsummons, actually, in his deck. But I think that's... I mean, oh, more there's a Searing Spear right here. That's going to take out the Captain of the Watch. Cedric's content with that. Is that a Crippling Blight as well? Crippling Blight will prevent the Battlefield Eagle from blocking, and he'll, Cedric will scoop it up. Shota's going to take a, take the lead one game to none in the quarterfinals here against Cedric Phillips. Yep, Shota Yasuoka and his red-black deck. Yeah, Cedric, Cedric Jack just didn't muster up any of the cards that he was really, really looking for that would help him out. The Fog Banks are excellent against Shota there. Yeah, and uh, Shota was able to get his a perfect aggressive start, starting off with the Muck Waiter, moving into the Nighthawk, and then following up with a constant stream of creatures after that. So what do you think these players are looking at when they, they go to sideboard, looking to put in? What, what cards, perhaps, in Shota's deck? In Shota's deck, um, let's see, in his, what is he, uh, not main decking right now. He has one main deck, Duress. Let's see if there's anything else. He's a mind rot in his board. So if we're looking at those cards, maybe uh, and he's a dark favor as well. And we have another update from the floor. Alex Lloyd defeats Kevin Michael. Two games to zero to advance advanced to the semifinals. And it looks like Robert Victory has taken one game over Jason Ford in the other quarterfinals. So maybe Shota's bringing in another Duress. He brought in something, obviously, or maybe replacing the Duress with a Mind Rot, trying to, in case he could catch Cedric with one of his expensive spells in his hand, like the Captain of the Watch or the Fairy Invaders. Cedric, on the other hand, if he was doing any sort of sideboarding, Kraken Hatchling would be perfectly fine. Sure. He's a 0-4 blocker. He has, oh, he has a total of four War Falcons. Two of them made the deck. I guess he doesn't have enough yeah, I mean, knights or soldiers to get it through. I think two is probably the limit that you can play. Other than that, I don't see anything else he could make. Both players sideboarded in cards, but they, they both kept him pretty close to the chat, their chest. And here's the top eight bracket here. You see Shah. Cedric Phillips is playing against, <laughs> uh, playing against Shota Yasuoka. <laughs> Robert Victory is playing against Jason Ford. Alex Lloyd has already defeated Kevin Michael. And then Thomas Hol Holsinger is playing against Brian DeMars. So we can crown quite the champion here. Yeah, we're seeing the, uh, the archetypes are using as well. Black, green, mid-range for Alex Lloyd advancing there. Brian DeMars is, is a great blue-red control deck. Uh, Shota, we saw, and Cedric have excellent decks. It's a shame they have to play each other right away since both of their decks seem like w some of the better decks at, at the table. Yeah, and two of the best players in top eight. Plenty of talent in this top eight. It's actually a pretty awesome top eight for a 1,800-player tournament after mm -hmm. whittling it down to only eight players. Still have a lot of power. So these two players are about to sh shuffle up and start game two. So what Cedric's looking for now is going to, if he sided in something like the Kraken Hatchling, get some early defenses. We saw a lot of shortest guys are just the, the smaller, or, or very cheap costed uh, ag aggressive creatures. So if Cedric could get the 04 of Kraken Hatchling or get his fog banks online and then start pouring out his flyers, You'll probably look for that type of game plan in order to take down this game. Yeah, it's really similar to Cedric Phillips' bubble match against Dan Jordan. Dan Jordan was also playing a very aggressive black-red deck. And Cedric Phillips boarded in his Guardians of Akrasa and was able to use his later turn drops to defeat the really aggressive... Da Dan Jordan's really, really aggressive deck. Looks like Shota shows his sideboarded card here, turn one to rest, getting rid of a pacifism from Cedric Phillips, revealing two fog banks and... An Arctic Aven along with Oh, land. draws a blue off the top after revealing uh, the hand of all planes and three blue cards. Wow. And Crimson Muckwater comes down for Shota, but... Not a problem this time with Cedric having 
the right type of uh, defense. Fog bank into a flyer is exactly what we talked about Cedric needing. There's a vampire nuthawk though on show to side. And Cedric draws a pacifism. That's his second pacifism to put on. Wow. Put Puts on the vampire, vampire nuthawk. Cedric makes sure to tap correctly. So give he, his, yeah, so he could give his Aven Arc, Arc, Arctic Aven life link. He'll jump up to 23. Shota will drop down to 17. Wow, what what two good draws for Cedric. Like yeah, first the island, and then the pacifism. But if, even with that said, if Shota gets rid of the Arctic Aven, Cedric doesn't have anything, no offense going on. Crippling Blight goes onto the fog bank. Crimson Muck Waiter attacks in. Drops Cedric back up down to 20, but... As we all know, including Shota, Cedric has a second fog bank that he can cast. So Cedric will jump up to 23. Shota will drop down to 14. And uh, we're assuming we're going to see the second fog bank come from Cedric. Yep. Looks like Cedric will play that second fog bank. Start blocking the Crimson Muck Waiter, but looks like uh, Essence Strain on the Arctic Haven will take out Cedric's lone attacker. Getting Shota back up to 17 life, and no play from Cedric. A Ooh. second crippling fight for Cedric's other fog bank. Perfect answer to fog bank. Crimson Muck Waiter continues to get in, and Battleflight Eagle comes down, no creature really to target. Crimson Muck Waiter again attacks in, dropping Cedric down to 17, and a Dragon Hatchling. And now there's a Dragon Hatchling. I'll be able uh, to defend against a Battleflight Eagle or trade with a Battleflight Eagle, depending on what the course of action is in this turn. That Crimson Merc Raider is just going to crush in again. Cedric had the cards we said that he needed, but Shota had the perfect answers yeah. that his deck has. Oh, an Essence Drain on the Battleflight Eagle. Yeah, things are not looking good for Cedric here. So much here. removal from Shota's deck. Two Essence Drain, two Crippling Blights. Looks like a Fairy Invaders will come in and ambush the Dragon Hatchling. Buying Cedric yeah. a little more time. He may have considered maybe trading with the Crimson Muck Waiter since he was tapped out from there, but I guess uh, just ambushing it was a little better. I, I Eat a guy for free and then uh, figure a way to deal with Muck Waiter later on. Cedric just cast Tauran's Invocation there, waiting on... Two, two, two flyers. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Uh, so Cedric does, definitely has a plan now. He's going to be crushing, crashing in for seven each turn. Canyon Minotaur over for Shota. So he's coming in for seven as well. Wow. Back and forth magic here. Oh, and, and Captain, Captain of the Watch. Watch. There wow. we go. The Kokens, as we saw last game, provided enough defense for Cedric in order to uh, buy him some time in the end. As you can still edit it losing, but we're going to see the same type of play now with Captain of Watch. I heard some applause from, from the future match area, so I have to assume that another match is done. So Shota figuring out what his attacks can be. If he wants to attack, if he wants to play a little defense. I don't think he really has any profitable attacks here, right? The Crimson Muck Waiter into Cedric, right, is the only one? Yeah, Crimson Muck Waiter into Cedric. But that leaves Cedric, Shota yeah. open. Then Cedric just doesn't block, and he has a lot of uh, offense afterwards. So it looks like the other result is that Robert Victory wins over Jason Ford two games to zero. And another result from the floor is Brian DeMars is up one game over Thomas Holzinger. Captain of Watch. Yeah, so like we were talking about, Crimson Muck Waiter, if it attacks and Cedric just takes it, Cedric is left with just a lot of offense. A lot of vigilance offense, too. Yeah. Oh, so what can Shota possibly have here? A public, public execution, execution is one card. We know that Shota does not have that. Let me double check here. Yeah, he does not have that in his list. That's a card that Cedric would be considering. He does have murder, so he could murder into Captain of the Watch, get rid of the plus one, plus one bonus for the rest of the soldiers. But Muck Waiter didn't attack anyway, so I imagine we're just going to see Cedric turn his flyer sideways. Yeah, he's just trying to figure out what he needs to play around. Right, so Cedric just sends everyone in. And what, what could Shota have? 
Shota has Ser yeah, Siri Spear, Cedric has Murder. Yeah. I, d I don't think that Shota has anything because he would have used both of those kill spells previously if he had them. So Yeah, he would handle, or at least you could handle the captain to watch to get um, so the guys at least tap when they attack. Yeah. So Shota declaring his box, but it's 2 it's four. 11 right oh, there. Yeah, 11. 11 is getting through. Oh, Searing Ooh. Spear for the Fairy Invaders. Interesting that Shota used it on. After Cedric decided to attack, and of course, Shota's gonna use regeneration on his Crimson Muck Waiter. But Cedric seems to have a response. Unsummon on <laughs> wow, <laughs> the, the captain, captain of the watch. watch. So now he's gonna come in for only six damage, bring Shota down to four, but he has a captain, captain of the watch. Yeah. <laughs> With three more soldier tokens. Cedric waiting, upon, uh, waiting for two more tokens. Shota will just think about it right here. <laughs> and he scoops it up. Oh, Cedric, after Shota's perfect start defense against Cedric's fog banks, Cedric was able to take the game again with Captain of the Watch, and we'll give him a, a game three right here. Yeah. Cedric Phillips ties things up at one game apiece. Yeah. Last few rounds, Cedric has been uh, very entertaining matches. But here he's all business. I, I know for a fact that he really wants to win this event. I mean, yeah. obviously everybody in Top 8 wants to win, but you can see the sort of difference between when he's playing with his friends people like Dan Jordan or Jason Ford and and playing against Shoti Asoka, one of the top players, one of the players in the Players' Championship. He He's really put his game face on, really focusing, knowing that this is his shot to to be a Grand Prix champion. Yeah, Cedric's last Grand Prix top eight was back in 2004. Uh, he's been looking, he, he's been basically playing he hasn't really taken too much of a break from 2004. Maybe small times here and there, but mostly he's been playing nonstop, and he's been craving right. another Grand Prix top he, eight. He had a heartbreaking ninth place at Grand Prix Oakland uh, a couple of years back, three years back, the one that Matt Nass won with Elves. He practiced for weeks with Dredge. He played it nonstop, something like 15 hours a day on Magic Online. Dredge, 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 multiple weeks in a row. Lost on tie breaks putting him in ninth place at that Grand Prix, Grand Prix Oakland. Which is unfortunate. He was really demoralized after that that near miss. And here you get a look at the top eight brackets with some results in the mix. Right now we've got Cedric Phillips playing against Shoti Asoka going to a game three. As I announced before, Robert Victory defeated Jason Ford two games to zero. Alex Lloyd defeated Kevin Michael two games to zero. And the match between Thomas Holtzinger and Brian DeMars is still ongoing. Yeah, Brian DeMars is up a game. Um, a it looks like he attacked with 33 goblins to take down that game. That okay. must mean Krenko. Yeah. <laughs> Krenko mob boss. Or a lot of... <laughs> Krenko's commands? Yeah. <laughs> Krenko's commands, Archaea Manser, Krenko's... They, I don't think that you Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll go with mob boss. Pretty sure it's mob boss. So, players are getting shuffled up for their deciding game three here. I see a team of local players, players like Matt Costa and AJ Soccer, consoling Jason Ford after his, his rough loss in the top eight here. He's really demoralized, but I'm sure, you know, he'll, he'll yeah. cheer Despite up. Despite the loss, um, top eighting an 1800 plus person tournament is pretty impressive. Especially for Jason Ford, who spent the summer not really playing too much magic, kind of joking that he might not go to Pro Tour Seattle. I mean, also a big congratulations to Robert Victory. He came to this event, I believe, in order to qualify for Pro Tour Return to Ravnica. It was his last chance, and, and since he top forward here. He's got he's his invite. Yeah. Congratulations. Here we are. Game three. Of the quarterfinals here at Grand Prix Boston Worcester. So Cedric Phillips needs something of the same. Shota actually, what happened last game is kind of what he wants against Cedric. Right. Double Cedric crippling was, yeah. light, double essence drain. Cedric was able to just go over the top of the captain of the watch. <laughs> Along with the fairy invaders and the tower invocation, it just shows how much card advantage some of these cards generate, the ones that create tokens. Tower invocation is, I know Luis Scott Vargas referred to it as the lingering souls of this format. Just a, one of these sort of unbeatable cards if you play fair. Players are drawing their opening hands. Hoping for no mulligans on both sides, and it looks like that's what we're going to get. 
land go from both players on the first turn. Looks like Shota peeled to duress on the second turn, but he's going to instead opt to play his creature in the form of Walking Corpse. No turn two play from Cedric. That's got to give Shota time to cast a uh, Servant of Neferox, attacking in with his Walking Corpse for three. You can see the pace of play here has really increased. Shota really excited with his aggressive draw. Started playing and tapping his lands very, very quickly. Now Cedric's going to take a breather on this turn three, figure out what he wants to play. Ends up deciding on Guardians of Akrasa. That will pause the beats for a At least from the Walking Corpse. Oh, there's a, a bit, duress. But yeah, the Servant of Nephrox can still get in and Oh, destroy. two pacifisms. Oh, Tolerance Invocation. There's a couple things we ha <laughs> to look at there, but we were just talking about how unbeatable Tolerance Invocation is, and Shota is not going to let that stay there. So yeah, Cedric Phillips hands of a pair of pacifisms, Arctic Aven, a land, and a second Servant of Neferox added to Shota's board is slowly taken away from Cedric's life total. He's fallen to a quick 12 life points. Yeah. And pacifism is, two pacifism is what he's looking for, but then Walking Corpse can come in. We're trying to find, uh, Cedric's trying to find something that uh, he could deal with the multiple exalted triggers. Looks like he Ooh. drew his second tower <laughs> So That'll come down, that'll deal with. Sort of just leans forward like, oh my god, really? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was like looking over the graveyard. Did Making you take it sure, yeah, Did you graveyard grab? <laughs> you weren't supposed to do that. Servant of Nashrox comes in. Is Cedric content taking five here? Looks that way. He'll fall to seven. Show to post combat will play Liliana's Shade. Fetching up his fifth land. Wow. Cedric Drake is just so powerful, but he's falling quickly behind because of the exalted triggers. I mean, Cedric does have that pair of pacifisms in hand, but he doesn't have a second white source in order to cast them. Yeah, and you can only cast one. In this case, pacifism just isn't enough with all these exalted. It makes every creature a threat that Shota plays. <laughs> I mean, that's the power of exalted, right? Yeah, I'd agree there. I know a lot of people say the black white exalted deck is one of the top decks too. Looks like a single Drake token will get in for three, dropping Shota down to 17. Post-combat Arctic Aven comes down for Cedric. So Cedric leaves a blue open. What does this, uh, is this going to signify an unsummon possibly? Yeah, he's got two in his deck. So if Shota decides to attack with just a single creature, if Cedric does have an unsummon, he can effectively fog for the turn. Shota has a lot of five, ooh, five mana removal spells too. So those could be coming soon. I wonder if Shota senses something fishy from Cedric. I mean, that attack's kind of weird, right? Uh, yeah. No, he attacked like that, then he tapped there without giving him the option to like block with his Arctic Aven and yeah. give it a lifelink. Instead, he'll just represent Unsummon. Unsummon. So Shota figuring out what attack he wants to make. Cedric does have two on summons. Yeah, Shota is trying to debate if it's better to come in with one or multiple. So looks like he's going to attack with just Servant of Neferox. All right. So I, I think, think regardless, Cedric is, e is doing something. He's either blocking or playing the unsummon we thought he may have. Wow, so this is... And yeah. there's unsummon. Turnus Leg will take out the Arctic Aven, and we've got another result from the tables. Brian DeMars defeats Thomas Holtzinger, two games to zero. A quick top eight we got here. So Cedric comes in for three again. With Talaran's invocation. Plays, oh, there you Night go. Glory. That will glory. stop. The perfect card right there. <laughs> the Protection from black. He we'll did miss his ex exalted trigger on there, so hopefully Cedric doesn't fall short by one life. Now Shota's got to attack with multiple creatures here, but that makes his attack much less effective. Of course, the Guardians of Across that can block. Y and he just used it, yeah. He used the uh, Turnus Leg last turn as one of his non-black removal spells. Um, he still has a spearing, Searing Spear in his deck to deal with a Knight of Glory, but right now Cedric uh, is getting closer to being able to stabilize here. Shota obviously is not attacking with one creature. It makes absolutely no sense. Shota plays a Swamp here in Crippling Blight. 
on the Guardians of Crossa and serves with the team. Uh, ooh. So, Cedric's going to drop the five here. Cedric hasn't even finished blocking, and Shota's so quick to pump his Liliana shade. Cedric falls to five life here, and post combat. Uh, is that a third servant of an Ephrox? I think that's the one that was unsummoned. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So three damage, or four damage for Cedric off the Drake token, a fog bank, and a pacifism. Ooh, there you go. So here's, <laughs> here's Cedric now. He has a Knight of Glory, a fog bank on defense. Um, crippling blade. If sh oh, there's a there's a furnace wall. Yeah, furnace wall for Shota is his turn. No attacks, obviously, into the fog bank and Knight of Glory, but that will stop the Drake beats. But we did see the second pacifism early on when uh, Cedric got duress. So he could play that pacifism, put it on the furnace, uh, furnace, whelp. furnace whelp, and then come in with for four damage still. That looks like what he's going to do. Pacifism, the furnace whelp, attacking for four, drop Shota down to six. And what does Shota draw off the top of his deck? Yeah, he is needing some help bad here. Shota just passes it back to Cedric. Looks like the one damage isn't going to end up mattering too much. We'll see. Cedric serves in for another four. Drop Shota down to two. Passes the turn back. Where Please do we stand Shota right now? Shota draw something. Is Cedric going to make top four here? S digging deep. <laughs> what could have Shota drawn? He has Essence Drain in his deck to buy him some extra time. Nope, and, and that's the match. <laughs> Cedric Phillips wins the quarterfinal wow. two games to one over Shota Yasoka and advances to the semifinals. <laughs> Wow. So congratulations, Cedric Phillips. That Knight of Glory that he ripped. Uh, we thought it might have cost him missing the one point of damage. It ended up not mattering, but that Knight of Glory was perfect for Cedric. He was able to defend against the black creatures um, without losing anybody. His fog bank came at the right time, and uh, Cedric is advancing top for his tournament.